Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Deb Goodkin, and I'm the executive director of the FreeBSD Foundation. And welcome, everyone. Um, it's so nice to get out of my home office. I mean, I love my home office, but it's great to get out and be with our community and see people in person. Um, I know people are live streaming. I think people are live streaming. Um, and so welcome to folks from all around the world who are here. So we have 15 minutes to talk about the foundation, what we do. And so I'm going to take the first five minutes and actually, well, I started the timer and, um, and, and talk about just like an overview of what we do. I know most people here know what we do. And I recognize almost everyone here. But, um, but one thing that we did learn from the survey, and I was going to go over our takeaways and, um, and sort of our insights, too, from the survey. Uh, but we, uh, we didn't actually have time to do that. And since we don't have a lot of time here, I won't do that here. But there are some key things that I did want to highlight. And, um, and so one thing was just the fact that people just aren't familiar with what we do. One thing that came out of the survey was just that they, folks knew that we did advocacy and legal. And, so, and it really was surprising to me just because we, uh, we do spend a lot of money and our resources on software development. And so I just want folks to really to know that. But it also highlights the fact that we need to publicize what we do more. And so I know folks here know. Um, and so, and there, there are some new folks, too. So that's why I want to make sure that folks are, or attendees are aware of, of the work that we're doing. Um, but, and other takeaways are just um, helping uh, navigate, new people navigate the process on how to contribute. So, uh, so we're looking into helping with that. And uh, hardware support came up. And surprise, surprise, Wi-Fi. Um, and, so, and that's something, I mean, we hear you. And we've been working on that. And, so, and Ed. Uh, we'll cover that and Joe. And so, so anyway, um, so I'm just going to give a really quick overview. And then um, Ed and Joe will talk about what we're doing in the technology group. And so just to remind everyone, we are a US-based uh, nonprofit. And it means we're for the public good. We're 100% uh, we're funded by your donations. And so we always ask you to help us ask your companies to help uh, fund our efforts. And, um, and then our whole purpose is to support the FreeBSD project and, and you. You are the community, and you contribute in so many different ways. So what do we do just really quickly? We do software development, fix bugs, uh, implement features. We advocate for FreeBSD. Uh, we have folks on the security team. We have Lee Wen, who heads up the continuous integration. We do purchase almost all the hardware for the FreeBSD infrastructure. Um, work on partnerships, do market research, understand what uh, users, how they're using FreeBSD. We are the legal entity for FreeBSD. And we do organize and plan and run events just like this one. This is who we are. About half of our team are here. Uh, just to highlight, Ed is our head of technology. Greg Wallace, who's over on that side, he's heading up our partnerships and research. And then Kim, who's not here, is heading up our marketing and advocacy work. Um, our goals, just really quickly, increase adoption of FreeBSD. Also make sure that current users are continuing to use FreeBSD to be able to use FreeBSD on your desktop. And so we are using the example of a college student being able to use it uh, for a whole semester. That will benefit almost all users. Increasing the visibility of FreeBSD. One thing we hear is that we don't hear about FreeBSD. I mean, we, we hear this from all over. And so this is an area we're investing in and raising $2 million. If we can raise at least $2 million, we could continue the efforts uh, right now, what we're doing, filling gaps. And we could fill in more gaps if we raise more money. So I want to discuss increasing advocacy and visibility. And, um, and the reason why I'm doing this, so there's two key areas that we're going to focus on today with our short time. So it's marketing and it's software development work. And the reason why I want to talk about marketing is because I know we're at a developer summit. And the, uh, there was an informal uh, survey that went out late last year from CORE. And so one thing that stood out, and I don't know how many people said this, but 
Um, but one thing I heard was, you know, we're at a developer summit. We want to hear about technology and improvements in the operating system. We don't want to hear about marketing. And so I totally get it. I mean, my background is engineering. And so when you look at things in a, you know, with your own lens, but I'll tell you, it's so important that we advocate. We like to refer to it as advocacy. We are doing previously advocacy for you. And we are promoting your work. And so by doing this, we are enabling technology by so many different ways that I've thought of listing right here. So, uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what we've been doing to improve our advocacy efforts and to improve the visibility and with the goal of increasing the adoption of FreeBSD for all different types of use cases. And so we've um, started interviewing um, users. And so we have a YouTube channel, well, the, the FreeBSD YouTube channel that we're posting them on. And, um, and so we, this is just tracking from, uh, from this year. So this is just sort of starting up. Uh, with the new resources that we have on staff. Uh, but one thing uh, I do want to highlight is down at the bottom, I don't know if you can read it, but, um, but we're starting to see these comments come over like the different forum, forums where we're posting these things. So it's like, thanks Tara and Kim, keep up FreeBSD evangelism. We've been uh, needing this for years. So that's, we hear this, we see this, and we're starting to do something about it. Uh, commercial use cases, we've just published, we actually have eight now. Um, on our website, we have a new updated page. We combine the testimonial page. Um, and now what we're doing is we're sharing commercial users' stories. And so it's helping show other users and corporations how companies are successfully using FreeBSD. Uh, we have some of the views. Netflix um, had the most, almost 10,000. Well, actually, these stats are up to uh, through April, so it's, um, I'm sure all of these have increased now. Um, and we want your story, so if we don't already have your story and you're willing to share it, uh, please let us know. We have a writer on staff, he's also a journalist, and he's excellent at working with uh, users, with companies to get their stories and really present it in an um, in interesting way. Uh, we've been producing content, we have writers on staff now, um, and not, I mean, not a lot. I mean, it sounds like we have a big staff, but, uh, but we're, our goal is to produce high quality content that really resonates with um, business decision makers, the people out there who are making those decisions on what operating system should we use. And understanding that, that FreeBSD is a compelling choice for their use case. Um, Right away, when Jason um, stepped on board, he actually uh, met or interviewed Colin, uh, who is our release engineer, and, uh, and wrote blog posts on those releases that came out, and also wrote a story on, um, on Colin and the process, and, um, and also uh, thank Glenn for all of his time uh, being our release engineer. And then social media, we've, uh, we've improved the strategy. We are posting more. Uh, we're getting a lot more engagement and, um, and views, and just posting more like exciting and engaging, informative content. And so the graphs are just showing the, the growth. In this case, it's the impressions. And so I, people have been showing us some of these comments. I don't always see them on these different forums. But I mean, it's just showing like nice to see BSD getting decent press. And uh, oh, the foundation has stepped up, um, you know, up a gear lately. And it's good to see. And so I'm not trying to pat our backs on this. It's really to showcase or to highlight the fact that uh, we weren't advocating enough. And that's, that's something that the project really needs. And that's what we're doing for you. I want to cover a little bit about partnerships. Um, OK. I'm gonna I have one minute. I will not be able to give this, um, this topic the justice it really deserves. But we did bring in Greg Wallace, he's sitting over there, um, as our head of partnerships and research. I know a lot of you folks have met with him um, already, but it's, it's giving 
the community a chance to have someone who's really focused on uh, what you're doing. If you're a commercial user, you're going to just, a, not just, but an individual contributor too. And so he's uh, meeting with, uh, with companies, find out what are your use cases, what are your challenges. Um, he's also selling free BSD, and this is part of the advocacy. They're helping provide that content. Um, also connecting folks within the community with these corporations. He's identifying opportunities. And so some of these things that I've listed, I'm actually going to let Ed and Joe cover. Um, and then identifying needs um, of our users and actually um, heading up new groups like the Enterprise Working Group that I think a lot of you are familiar with. And it's connecting people and also having a chance to hear um, you know, what people, what are your challenges? What, um, what are the issues you're running into? And it feeds into what we're doing and it helps um, direct the work that we're gonna do. And uh, finally, the other thing is that uh, he is actually uh, providing a voice for us in these government uh, discussions on like, um, on cybersecurity. I mean, that's the big thing right now. And so being an active participant uh, representing FreeBSD and sharing how we're doing things as well as finding out like what are these like mandates and guidelines? What do we have to do or what should we do? And bringing that information back to the project. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to our technology team and uh, Joe will kick it off or take over. And one thing I do want to say is please vote. And one more thing, too, I want to piggyback on what um, 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 oh, 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 John said, um, is that uh, please consider, if you've been around for a while, to mentor new young people to our project. And I've really seen this work where um, you know, young people would join, and, and they have that excitement and enthusiasm, but they feel like you know, they see all of us. And they're like, well, I'm, you know, I don't have the years that this person has, and I can't, I can't mentor a GSOC student. And think about how um, these young people can do it, and sometimes they just need someone to help uh, bring them along. And so, so we've seen this within the project, but we don't talk about it much. But, um, but, but. Uh, but we've had an example of someone who did lead a GSOC pro, um, project. He didn't think that he could. He had a great idea. And I said, well, you know, why don't you lead it? And he said, why well, I can't. I'm too young. And so we actually convinced him to do it. We got a mentor for him, so a mentor for a mentor. And it was highly successful. So I really encourage um, people, when you see new people, especially here at the conference, to start a conversation and find out what they're interested in and see what you could do to help. Now, I will hand this off to Joe. asked to uh, take about five minutes just to tell people, update people uh, on what the technology team has been up to uh, for the past year. And I thought I would start with um, a very rough but simple way of, of showing what, what's been going on. Uh, and that's with commit data. So the donut plot on the left is a breakdown of all uh, sponsored commits to the source repository, which makes up about 43% of all commits to the source repository. So I presented this uh, in the past two updates and nothing has dramatically changed. Um, the foundation is still uh, the biggest contributor to uh, sponsored commits. It's also interesting to note that the foundation and Netflix together make up about half of those uh, commits. And um, maybe the other takeaway is it's nice to see lots of color there, colors there and that lots of different entities are, are contributing, and I think that's healthy. I mean, it's good and bad that the foundation and Netflix are, are high in some ways, but it's also good to see um, it, it's, it's more sustainable, I guess, 
uh, if we see uh, more entities uh, contributing. Uh, the column uh, chart on the right is a breakdown of the foundation sponsored commits over the three repositories over the past year. Um, we typically focus on sponsoring work in the source tree and that's um, stayed pretty steady where we hover around 100 uh, sponsored commits per month. The spike there in the ports tree was when we um, contracted Moin Raman to deal with ports fallout uh, related to LLBM and OpenSSL v3 updates uh, in preparation for 14.0. Um, and so I'll say, you know, we have very limited time, so I'll say very quickly about what people are doing uh, on the technical team at the foundation. So everybody knows Ed. Um, Ed, of course, leads the team. Um, and he does a lot of direct development work, but he does a lot of things behind the scenes. Um, so he does a whole lot of work with Greg on uh, partnership stuff, partnerships with companies, does a lot of mentoring, serves on core, all those sorts of things. Um, Constantine is using his x86 uh, operations expertise to, uh, currently to work on a project to uh, develop an AMD IO MMU driver. Uh, Lee Wen um, does a whole lot of things behind the scenes too, like he does a whole lot of mentoring, uh, a lot of high profile projects like CI, Git conversion, um, commit bits in all three repositories. Um, as a project manager, I support uh, developers who work with the foundation. I try to chip in other ways like administering Google Summer of Code, sometimes mentoring, um, and I try to sneak in a bit of ports work when I can. Uh, Pierre Proncheri's face might not be as familiar. He's still somewhat new with the foundation. He came from NetBSD uh, to work on user land tasks, so he um, did, chipped in a lot to update OpenSSL to v3 did some work on the installer, uh, is now doing some security work. Um, these are what we're calling our long-term contractors. So Mark contracts with a lot of different entities. He's uh, also worked with us for quite a while. And Mark also does a lot of things behind the scenes that people may not be as familiar with, like a whole lot of mentoring, uh, which is great. Uh, Bjorn has worked uh, in a limited capacity with us, but over a long time on, on wireless stuff. Um, made a lot of, uh, a big push recently for some stability improvements in wireless. So hopefully everybody that's running FreeBSD had no issues with wireless here. I haven't heard any complaints yet. Uh, Mitchell will talk later about uh, the RISC-V work that he's been doing. Uh, John is basically on call for us uh, for security issues as they come up. Uh, Olivier, um, Still relatively new with us, touches a lot of different parts of the tree. Right now, a big project that Olivier is working on is to make UnionFS uh, stable and useful on FreeBSD. Uh, Tom, I listed Tom as networking uh, because he is wrapping up a project to port uh, VPP, uh, vector packet processor, to FreeBSD for RGNets. Um, and these are uh, project contractors who are either working with us now or completed a project within the last year. Robert Klausecker um, implemented SIMD versions, um, single instruction, multiple data instructions for a bunch of libc functions with the goal of improving performance. Uh, Kirk uh, finished uh, at the end of last summer a project to uh, enable snapshots on UFS with journal soft updates. Moin has a couple different projects with us, improved CI, CI, did that ports work that I mentioned. He's also working on a CIS benchmark, uh, which is essentially a guide for, for uh, securing FreeBSD by default. Mina's working on cloud init. Uh, Pablo, who's here, uh, is wrapping up a uh, project to add hierarchical rate limits to ZFS. Christos, former GSOC student, uh, worked with Mark on a bunch of different projects. He's working on improving audio on FreeBSD right now. Uh, Philip, long time uh, cluster admin member, does a whole lot of work for cluster admin. He basically set up uh, a new cluster site in Chicago and will be working with us in an, uh, to continue that work soon. And uh, Cheng uh, assisted Bjorn for a project for six months on, on wireless tasks. Uh, and so we have um, some people, I think, that are here. Uh, so Li Wen uh, mentors a lot, as I said. So Yan Hao and En Wei both worked with Li Wen. So on 
docs and testing. And Enway gave a talk here um, at BSD CAN on his wireless alert. Quite a nice talk. Naman and Jake uh, both interned with us. And Chishin is doing a whole lot of work. Oh, he's here. Great. On, on OpenStack uh, in, outside of his, uh, his regular job. And then Sala is going to start working with us uh, 10 hours a week to um, improve uh, desktop experience, so implementing some of these Dbus uh, daemons that are required for uh, desktop environments. And uh, oh, last thing I'll mention is that uh, we've had a long-term relationship with Google Summer of Code. We participated every year, um, 274 total projects. Um, I think the biggest benefit, in my opinion, from GSOC is introducing new people, young people, to the project. So right now, uh, we have a core team member who was introduced to, to FreeBSD through GSOC. Um, you know, not all projects make it, GSOC projects have code that make it in the tree, but some do, and here's a couple examples. Um, and we are participating again this year in GSOC with uh, 11 projects. Don't have time to say anything about these, but if you just search FreeBSD GSOC, you'll find um, descriptions of all these projects. And uh, I think now Ed is going to talk about kind of bigger picture topics with projects. Uh, I'm going to go through this quite quickly because we are. Um, uh, well into our break, um, and we want to make sure that there's a little bit of time for, for folks to uh, to have a break. Um, this is a very high level view of, of sort of the um, the criteria by which we might choose to invest in a project. So um, you know we'll find things that um, uh, have a broad appeal to the the community that um, will benefit a large portion of our users. Um, we'll find things that the community is not taking on uh, within funded development efforts from within companies. Um, so a lot of developer tools and general usability things, everyone kind of wants it to be there, but it's not something that um, is necessarily uh, of, of value to a specific individual company to invest in. Um, things that uh, Deb mentioned very briefly, foundation goals uh, for 2024, and so uh, tasks that align with those goals will be things that we fund. Um, and then just sort of general um, uh, uh, projects that are, are important to FreeBSD's viability as the, uh, the technology landscape evolves. And so the, the work that Caustic is doing right now on the AMD IOMMU driver um, is something that's sort of just, it's, it's a necessary component uh, for FreeBSD to continue working on hardware that's, that's becoming available. Um, and so I have a few slides here that basically talk very briefly about uh, projects that we are evaluating, we're looking at scoping, we have proposals in um, to, to invest uh, in, but they're not sort of necessarily committed yet or, um, or haven't been uh, discussed publicly. Uh, in all cases, some of them, there's, there's things that have been done, um, and I'll, I'll mention those briefly. Um, so framework uh, um, laptops, uh, we've had some initial discussions with framework. Um, to use, use Framework as one of the laptop brands that we're going to, um, within the foundation, uh, highlight as a, um, uh, a preferred laptop. Or we're, we're, within the foundation, we're going to work with Framework to make sure that Framework laptops work well um, with FreeBSD. Um, the graphical installer, uh, Joe mentioned briefly, uh, Pierre did a lot of work to uh, to take our existing uh, installer and, and port it sort of um, uh, in the same fra uh, form that it's in into a, a graphical installer. And I think one of the things, I mean, I've heard feedback when people have, have looked at this project, um, you know, in sort of uh, um, two, two main uh, themes. One is, oh, you know, I'm glad that someone's finally doing this. We're moving out of the, the 90s, finally. Um, and then I've heard, um, we can't get rid of a text installer. FreeBSD, like this, is is what we are. We can't eliminate the text installer. And I think um, it's we're not we're not looking at replacing um, you know what's what's there right now. And the, the installer that um, that Pierre has worked on is the same installer, the same workflow for better or worse. Um, but is a uh, you know it's a starting point for us to look at what might be possible. And right now we can do. Um, the exact same workflow that we had before in text mode or in um, in 
uh, starting from uh, in graphics mode right at the beginning. Um, we're looking at a, a few things um, with uh, to improve the the boot story, interacting with projects like netboot.xyz and uh, Bentoy, which is a multi-OS tool that's really popular for people who run lots of different operating systems on their, uh, on their laptop, people who are sort of cycling through and trying different OSs all the time. And so I think it's really important that FreeBSD interacts well with those sorts of tools so that the people who, who are trying you know, five or six different OSs, FreeBSD is, is very easy to install in that uh, environment rather than being, oh, I can install 17 different Linux distros and all kinds of different things, but FreeBSD doesn't play well with that. Um, Wi-Fi um, is an ongoing uh, source of uh, frustration for many, and we're going to continue investing um, uh, in, in Wi-Fi and finding um, additional ways to try and move things faster um, if possible. Uh, sound subsystem, um, Joe mentioned, and I think we have a lot of good work that Christos has done uh, so far. And uh, Christos's plan has additional work um, with things like Bluetooth audio integration, uh, making that sort of work out of the box um, in a more convenient way. And so that fits very much into what Deb was saying around FreeBSD being usable as your development environment if you're a, a university student, say. And so the developer workflow, your editor, your compiler, those sorts of things work well on FreeBSD. But we also want to make sure that you know if you just want to listen to some music while you're um, uh, while you're coding, the uh, you know basic things like Bluetooth audio just just sort of work, um, and all of the the pieces are there in FreeBSD. I mean, some of them are um, a little more or less fragile or or um, uh, in different uh, um, sort of different states, but uh, it, it should be straightforward for people to use basic things um, like that. Um, looking at uh, along with what I mentioned earlier, sort of integrating better with dual boot uh, environments so people who want to um, again want to try different multiple different OSs on their their laptop um, it should be easy for them to, to do so um, a few different projects that uh, are, are we're pursuing in multiple um, ways I think Lee Wen has talked a bit briefly about the um, the webcam driver but we're looking at um, uh, a couple of different ways to to make sure that um, standard uh, USB webcams are uh, are well supported. Um, we're looking at package base, uh, stepping in to, to kind of clean up whatever loose ends um, we can help with. Uh, and then also, um, along with what Joe said earlier about the foundation's focus being fairly source heavy in the past, um, we're looking at trying to invest more heavily into ports um, looking forward. And so picking up some things um, uh, to help support ports infrastructure in general and, and CI um, in particular is something that we're, um, we're looking at. Um, and then a couple of uh, things that are um, somewhat more aspirational or under investigation. There's been interest from a few sources um, of using the, the Octo tooling and ecosystem um, but to build FreeBSD. Um, and so I'm not entirely sure if this is something that will um, will come to fruition, fruition or not, but uh, but it is definitely something that's that's under investigation. Um, uh, within the foundation, we're looking at how we might collaborate more closely with uh, with Cherry and um, uh, Armorello. Um, basically, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, research and. Um, uh, a lot of work that's happening in an academic context, um, but we're interested in seeing from the foundation's perspective how we can kind of help move that whole uh, uh, the ecosystem along and, and what we can bring um, in our unique way to, uh, to support that. Um, we've had some discussions with various folks on making um, uh, what's sort of the, the de facto standard um, uh, GPU and AI uh, approaches available in, in FreeBSD. Um, and so again, as, as with some things I mentioned earlier, a lot of this is possible in FreeBSD today, but rather awkward or cumbersome. Um, and so as a very first step, we're looking at just trying to make things streamlined a little bit and, um, uh, and more usable. Um, and then finally, um, uh, a couple of, of language runtimes um, that are 
uh, interesting or important for various uh, reasons. So .NET and OpenJDK um, we're looking at trying to support. Um, and then uh, from the um, from feedback from the core team, um, funding work on an iNotify um, or equivalent uh, uh, infrastructure and implementation in FreeBSD is um, is something that's uh, high on our priority list. And that's uh, that's what I have. Um, so I think that uh, our our break is going to rapidly um, uh, run out. So I'll hand it over to John to um, to take on. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Ed and Deb and Perfect. <laughs>